the order for provisional measures from the International Court of Justice on Friday last was historic. It brought clarity to a number of important points on South Africa's claims against Israel under the Genocide Convention. Crucially, the court clarified that the Palestinian people of Gaza are entitled to be protected from acts of genocide under the Convention. It clearly stated that some of the claims by South Africa are plausible. The court found that there is an urgency and real and imminent risk of breaches of articles of the Genocide Convention. In effect, Kehirlock, the ICJ has found that a genocide may or may imminently be committed by Israel against the Palestinian people of Gaza. That is why the court outlined the enforceable provisional measures and the only way to fulfil the order of the court is through full, immediate and permanent ceasefire. Israel has again refused to ceasefire. The Irish government can no longer deny that it is aware of an imminent threat of genocide being committed. In fact, no government can. And Ireland, therefore, has a clear, unambiguous and urgent legal obligation to identify all measures available to the state to deter the commission by Israel of the grave crime of genocide. I note and welcome that the government's position on this issue has changed since South Africa first indicated that it would take this case, having initially categorically ruled out joining. Now I note that the Taunashta has confirmed that he has asked his officials to prepare legal advice for his consideration on an urgent basis, and I welcome that, but it is too slow. What is required is leadership. South Africa has shown leadership, and Ireland can and must do the same. It is not true to say, as some have, that Ireland can only indicate our intention to intervene after South Africa have submitted their substantive case. In the ICJ order in Ukraine versus the Russian Federation of June last year, the court observed that articles um, do not restrict the right of intervention uh, to a particular phase of proceedings or to a certain type of provision in a convention. Government can and should send a clear message to the world by adopting the Sinn Féin motion. Their amendment again seeks to long finger the necessary action, and it's simply not good enough. Government can and should file a declaration of intention to intervene in this case with the ICJ. It can immediately commence the process for participation in this case, and that's what the Sinn Féin motion calls for. The Government amendment changes definitive active, um, actives, um, actions with considerations and potentialities. It lacks the urgency that humanity requires and it lacks the urgency that our obligations under the Genocide Convention demands. Whenever proposals are brought before this doll that serve to hold Israel accountable for its decades of blatant breaches of international law or for the recent barbaric assault on Gaza, government's response is often to wait for others. Whether they be political, diplomatic, economic or trade measures, we are told that government is trying to find partners, and that would be fair enough if partners were willing to present. But given the ICJ ruling of last Friday and the judgment that, is, that there is a plausible risk of genocide, we cannot wait for others. Our obligation is to use every mechanism available to us to stop and prevent that genocide. Look for comparison, Kehirlock, at the speedy, the disgraceful response of Israel's allegations in respect of UNRWA by what they would consider to be their allies, and remembering that UNRWA is the last lifeline of, um, to the Gazan people. Within minutes of Israel making those um, allegations, vital funding was suspended, un suspended, undoubtedly leading to further hardship for the Palestinian people, something I thought was impossible. And compare that with the response of those who claim to be friends of Palestine's upholders of international law and defenders of the UN Charter. Over 25,000 killed, 2 million displaced, a humanitarian crisis of biblical proportion unfolding before our eyes, and government says it will strongly consider taking action. Last Friday, the International Court of Justice put the world, and indeed Ireland, on notice. Today, Ireland must respond, not with more consideration of doing things, but with action that actually forces Israel to stop the slaughter.
And Tanisha, this is day 116 of Israel's brutal, indiscriminate and merciless war against the people of Gaza. A bombardment that has stolen the lives of men, women and children, with the Israeli war machine and its government killing over 26,000 civilians. Over 18,000 of them women and children. 1.9 million people displaced, with those who have so far survived this onslaught enduring inhumane conditions that we can't ever comprehend. Tens of thousands of children have been orphaned. Hospitals, ambulances, schools, homes have been targeted, destroyed, reduced to rubble. And before the eyes of the world, Israel has unleashed a storm of death and destruction from which no Palestinian, man, woman or child can escape. There has not been a more lethal military campaign in recent times, and much of the world has watched on with the Israeli government acting with impunity, acting without a trace of morality or respect for human life. And Sinn Féin stands with the Palestinian people. Ireland stands with the Palestinian people. Our support to the cause of Palestine freedom, Palestinian freedom and justice has never wavered and it has never been stronger. And it is time for this Thal and this government to stand with them and to hold the Israeli government, a government fuelled by racist hate and genocidal intent, to account. My party and I commend Deputy Carthy has brought this motion before the Thal, as he did in November, calling on the government to refer Israel to the International <coughs> Criminal Court for its onslaught on Gaza and its population. Regrettably, the government opposed that call at the time. We commend the action of South Africa in bringing a case against Israel before the International Court of Justice under the Genocide Convention, because it is crystal clear that the only way to give effect to the ICJ judgment is for a full and permanent ceasefire. The court found that South Africa had a plausible case and that Israel has a case to answer for violations under the Genocide Convention. So it is now time for this government to act on behalf of the Irish people and to join South Africa in their case to hold Israel to account for their crimes against the Palestinian people. Israeli impunity must end and justice must prevail. Gurmaigat. Thanks very much, Cahir Luck. Um, I think when we're talking about the situation in Gaza and in Palestine, it's nearly getting to the stage where we're running out of words to describe the horrors that we're witnessing. And I think for a lot of people, um, the fact that this is actually televised, this is not like some historic war that we're reading about in history books. We're actually seeing this live on social media and on television, and it's very, very difficult for ordinary, decent people to understand how on earth Israel are still getting away with the horrific, disgusting um, act, act of genocide that they're engaged in. At the end of December, the official figure of children who have been killed in Palestine was 8,663. As we're nearly into February, that figure has obviously risen. But just to put it in context for people, because sometimes in this chamber, when we're talking about figures in any way, shape or form, I think you can forget exactly that every single person behind that has their own story. And in the, for the county of Clare, the population of children under five is 8,803, and for Waterford, the population of under fives is 8,316. Um, so it's basically like the equivalent of everybody under the age of five uh, being wiped out. That's how many children have been killed, and that's to the end of December. So actually more children have been killed since then. We know that the UN has called the besieged Palestinian enclave a graveyard for children due to the high casualty figures. And we also know that about 1,000 children, according to UNICEF, have had one or both legs amputated, and often in unbelievable conditions that I don't think we can even you know, uh, contemplate in terms of no anaesthetic and no medicines available. So I think when we talk about this, we should all think of our own children, of our grandchildren, nieces, nephews, whatever children we know in our life. And can you imagine if they were left in that situation where their choice is uh, potentially losing a limb without correct medical care or death? 
and that's what the children of Palestine have been subjected to. So it's absolutely vital that Ireland stand shoulder to shoulder with the people of Palestine and that we put our names forward in relation to this case. I think South Africa are to be commended for their action, but I think it's really important that we stand on the right side of this, that we support the Palestinian people completely and that we ensure that we put our names forward for this case. I think that is what everybody um, in, in this country want us to do as well and I think that we all have been asked to, to ensure that we do this, that we, we're, it's not just empty words, that's us actually taking action and showing that we, we want the, the slaughter to end and the genocide to end. Thank you, Cahirlach. The Irish people have watched in horror as Gaza faces annihilation. Missiles rain down upon two million people who have been denied food, fuel and water in one of the most densely populated areas in the world. Israel acts with impunity through its indiscriminate slaughter of a trapped population. Entire families have been killed in their beds. Many more are trapped in the rubble. Over 26,000 people have been killed. Two million have been displaced in an event that resembles the Nakba of 1948. This cannot and must not continue. In Sinn Féin, we believe that every diplomatic, legislative and political option must be deployed in order to deliver a full, unequivocal and immediate ceasefire. Today's motion to join South Africa in, the, in its ICJ case against Israel represents a significant opportunity to send a message from Ireland to the world, a message which states in unequivocal terms that Ireland believes in international law, that we stand for peace and humanity and that we will not stand idly by as a plausible case of genocide is taking place, as last Friday's initial ruling of the South African case confirmed. Universal backing of this motion by all TDs across this House, government and opposition alike, represents an opportunity to be on the right side of history, to uphold the principles which should underpin our collective sense of how we value human life. Now is not the time to be silent. Now is the time to uphold Ireland's obligation to prevent genocide. Any doubt that the Taoiseach had as to whether the people of Gaza have the right to protection under the Genocide Convention should now be well and truly eliminated. The reality is that this government's rhetoric has not been matched by action. Government have repeatedly ignored numerous calls and proposals from Sinn Féin and others. They declined to refer Israel to the ICC. They failed to progress, to progress the Illegal Israeli Set Settlements Divestment Bill. They failed to progress the Occupied Territories Bill. They failed to deliver on their own programme for government commitment to recognise the state of Palestine. The list goes on. This evening's motion represents an opportunity to take a different approach, to take, a de to take decisive action to hold Israel to account and to implement a full, unequivocal and immediate ceasefire. I, or, I implore government to support it. Gormagat. Gormagat. Um, last Friday, the International Court of Justice made a historic ruling. The court ordered Israel to take action to prevent acts of geno genocide in Gaza. The court said Israel must stop killing Pal uh, Palestinians and Israel must stop causing serious physical and mental harm to Palestinians. Israel must also prevent its troops from committing genocide, prevent incitement to commit genocide, allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza and take action to preserve evidence of genocide. There is no doubt Israel is breaking international law every day to slaughter tens of thousands of Palestinians but they now face the charge of genocide in The Hague. And the only way to give effect to this court ruling is an immediate ceasefire. As Israel's destruction of Gaza and slaughter of Palestinians continues, they are ignoring the International Court of Justice and its role in genocide. Political leaders around the world that fail to call for an immediate ceasefire are going against the court as it works to prevent genocide. Every state has a responsibility to adhere to international law. It's not an optional extra. Nobody, none are as important as the Convention on, on, of Genocide. Ireland has a moral responsibility to do all we can to stop genocide. 
The government must now say it will intervene on the side of South Africa, file a declaration of intention to intervene in with the ICJ, and begin the preparations of a legal submission on the side of South Africa and the side of the Palestinian people. This government cannot say they didn't know. History will judge you by your actions or your lack of actions to support Palestine at this time. Chair. Uh, last Friday, uh, the International Court of Justice made a decisive uh, ruling. It ruled that South Africa has a plausible case against Israel on the crime of committing genocide. It's imperative that Ireland acts and joins South Africa in this uh, particular case. Ireland and the EU have a duty to pr promote and protect and, and support st peace and stability in uh, this particular region. We must uh, take uh, and make the terror state of Israel an outcast among the international community. The EU must mirror its reaction to Russia, uh, Russia's brutal uh, war on Ukraine. We must see an EU-wide ban on athletes and teams representing the apartheid state of Israel. Because sports can't simply go on as if it, genocide is not happening. And the Irish government should, not be, uh, should be standing by our athletes who do not want to compete against Israel. The Olympic Committee uh, stood on the right side of history in the 60s when it barred uh, South Af apartheid South Africa. And it is now time for the Olympic Committee to once again take a stand against apartheid and ban Israel from participating in the upcoming Olympic Games. And it's clear that the Olympic Committee won't do this off their own back. Uh, we need Ireland, uh, we need you, Minister, uh, and other EU states to publicly call on the Olympic Committee to act and stand by its declaration against apartheid in sport. A declaration that calls for total isolation of apartheid in sport. And we also need the Olympic Federation of Ireland to also take action and step forward. And I commend the members of the Irish basketball team who are refusing to play against Israel next month. Basketball Ireland, who backed the sporting uh, boycott of Russia, uh, should now be calling for the same against Israel. Basketball Ireland should be standing by their players, and they should be calling on FIBA, uh, basketball's world's governing body, to ban Israel from competing due to crimes uh, of its government. History has shown us the strength of sport in fighting injustice and breaking apartheid. The message is clear from Ireland, uh, and it needs to be clear. Don't play with apartheid. Go on, Thanks, uh, uh, Minister, over 26,750 Palestinians have already been killed in Gaza as we sit here this evening. A further 65,636 have been wounded since October the 7th. Two million Palestinians are displaced, with thousands more missing, many buried under rubble. Israel is killing on average 250 Palestinians per day in Gaza, and this represents a higher daily rate than any other 21st century armed conflict. Israeli attacks have killed one out of every 100 Palestinians in Gaza and injured, often with life-altering wounds, at least two Palestinians in every 100. And while Israel continues to deny any medical and rescue teams access to where they are operating within Gaza. These numbers will continue to grow unless pressure through the form of international censure is brought to bear on Israel. Tanishta, Gaza is being dismantled house by house, street by street, school by school, and hospital by hospital. And the failure to impose sanction on Israel must be measured against the haste with which so many Western countries acted to suspend funding from UNRWA which has lost 152 personnel killed since the start of the attack on Gaza, a decision which has, will do more to compound human suffering and undermine regional st stabilisation goals on the ground more than anything else. These actions are viewed as a, a collective punishment on pan of Palestinians within Gaza so many are dependent on the 154 aid centres set up by UNRWA for refuge. And yet, 
Tarnish, that many of the countries that have cut the funding to UNRWA continue their funding to the Israeli military regime to continue their genocide. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. That's what they are. The government has said that it will engage with South Africa over the coming months as to whether it will intervene in the genocide case against Israel. Tarnish, that the Palestinian people haven't got four months or six months. They haven't got a week. They are dying in their thousands. The government is morally bound to support Sinn Féin's motion here this evening, a motion which will mandate Ireland to support, do the right thing, and support the South African case against Israel under the Genocide Convention. We cannot continue to sit on the fence against acts of international crime, against genocide. We have heard your words of, of concern, of condemnation in the past. It's time to get off the fence now, Tarnister. It's time to take definitive action and stand up for the Palestinian people once and for all at a time that matters. Thank you. Thank you. Where the Tarnister finished, and I suppose to share concern in relation to the allegations in relation to UN UNRWA uh, staff and obviously the allegations that have been made um, that they were participating in the attacks on October 7, the appalling attacks that took place on that day. Um, but I echo what has been said, that the role of UNRWA is absolutely crucial and there can be no um, the threats that have been made and the threats followed through on in relation to funding uh, by some donors is, uh, is extremely worrying um, and I don't think is a, at all proportionate to a situation where there is 400,000 people facing famine. Um, there have been 25,000 people killed, an enormous proportion of them, um, up to, uh, to several thousand uh, of those children. Um, at, the, at the outset of this, there was a lot of talk about a humanitarian catastrophe. And I think that that is an appropriate phrase in many ways. But I suppose where it doesn't sit well with me is the fact that humanitarian catastrophes are things that we associate with earthquakes and tsunamis and so on. This is slaughter inflicted on a mass scale um, by the Israeli, uh, Israeli government and the Israeli defence forces. Um, and the outcome of it now that we are looking at is going far beyond the enormous direct slaughter and potential hunger, potential illness uh, and huge human suffering. And it is in that context that the demand for the ceasefire has been made, one again made by the Irish government, which I acknowledge and welcome, but one which has not been heeded by the Israeli government um, and one which they are resisting uh, international pressure is in that context that this motion comes from. And it is not seeking <coughs> division unnecessarily. It is seeking to ensure that whatever mechanisms exist from this small country, but an influential country, particularly in a European context and on this matter, can be used to use whatever pressure that we can. I believe that this is one particular avenue that is possible. It is not saying that um, it is possible or something that can be achieved in the short term to become on the same terms as South Africa or anything like that, but a declaration of intent. I believe that that can have an impact. I believe that whatever, there is an urgency to this. That must be restated. There is a huge urgency to this, to the people of Gaza, and that is why we should not accept the amendment and to declare that intent to participate. I want to thank my colleague Chuck McCarthy for bringing forward this motion uh, this evening and for, for his work on this matter on behalf of the Palestinian people. Last Friday's judgment from the ICJ was a huge event in the course of this war. While the court may not have used the word ceasefire, the only way their findings can be implemented is through a full permanent and complete ceasefire. In one of the most important international court judgments of our time, the ICJ ruled that South Africa have a plausible case and that Israel has a case to answer in respect of violations of the Genocide Convention. The ruling demands action from the international community and if the Irish government cannot lend its way to the South African case, then this is a very sorry state of affairs. Ireland previously intervened, intervened in the case of Ukraine v Russia taken under the Genocide Convention after an order of provisional measures was issued. So why is the government dragging its feet now? 
The failure of Western countries to fully support the South African case exposes a deep hypocrisy in terms of international law and adherence to a global rules-based order, and Ireland should not be party to this hypocrisy. The failure of many Western countries to call for a ceasefire or back the South African case has shown that there is no global rules-based order. These actions are having an immediate and devastating impact on the Palestinian people who are being slaughtered at the hands of Israel in a manner that has few precedents in this century. And let it be said that South Africa has put on trial not just Israel for genocide, but the governments of all of those states who stand idly by. Now is the time for the government on behalf of the Irish people to indicate that they will join South with South Africa in their case to hold Israel accountable for their crimes against the Palestinian people. There are no more excuses. Israeli impunity must end. Unanimous support for the Sinn Féin motion here this evening would send a huge message from Ireland, heard the world over, that we are firmly on the side of international law, international humanitarian law and the UN Charter. The provisional ruling from the court on Friday demands action from the international community. South Africa has shown leadership. Now is the time for our government to show the same leadership. And Tanishta, in your contribution, you used the word I more than 20 times. I travelled. I was the first minister too. I hear. I value. Tanishta, with the greatest of respect, this is not about you. This is about the nearly 27,000 dead Palestinians. Go on, I would like to begin by thanking the South African government and especially the Irish barrister, Bin and Nick Crawley, and their legal team in successfully seeking provisional order from the International Court of Justice for restraining Israel from committing potentially genocidal acts in Gaza. The highest court in the world has found there is a plausible risk that Palestinians' right to be protected from genocide are under threat from Israeli actions. This is an historic occasion for South Africa and the Palestinian people against the backdrop of an enormous pressure piled on by Israel and her powerful allies, namely America and the UK. The American administration called the legal suit as meritless, and the British government said it was nonsense. The verdict of 15 judges to two in favour of South Africans' claim was an indictment of those flippant remarks. As a neutral nation, we must support the verdict of an international court of justice and stand by its findings and deliberations. The military atrocities being deliberately and consciously inflicted on the civilians in Gaza must be halted. The voices of all right-minded people of the world are crying out for peace and humanitarian aid for the Palestinian people and are calling for the permanent ceasefire on all sides. It is also time for the voices of the Irish people to be heard. In their thousands, they are demanding that the Irish government stand with South Africa and file a declaration of intention to intervene in this case with the ICJ. Ireland is a contracting party to the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, must play its part in stopping the horrific inhumane actions by Israel on an entire civilian population of 2 million. Now was the time to stand up and call it out as it is. The attack on the 7th of October was terribly wrong. The actions after that date by Israel have gone way beyond retribution, beyond revenge and even beyond sanity itself. We are asking all deputies in this House to support this motion and for Ireland to take its rightful place and summon up the courage to join the South African and other like-minded countries to file a declaration of intent to intervene on this historic case with the ICJ. The ICJ ruling in South Africa's case was momentous and historic. Jurisdiction granted. Conditions of plausible genocide accepted. Israel's attempt to have the case thrown out emphatically rejected. Israel remains on trial in the matter of the genocide of the Palestinian people. If the state of Israel were an ordinary criminal rather than an alleged war criminal and were in front of any national court, they would essentially be out on bail with the world's warmongers putting up their bail bond. Also today, I want to put on record, in the Dáil record, the name of Irishwoman Blina Negrali KC, who presented part of South Africa's case and how proud we are of her outstanding work. Yet while the compassionate world held its breath for the interim order from the ICJ, an army of Israeli supporters were ready to press send on the UNRWA disclosures. What gall they had with their timing, showing their naked calculation, slyness, and their cynicism. With more than 12,000 children massacred, whole families removed from the civil registry in Gaza. So I actually do want to thank the Thanishtha for the position he took on the UNRWA funding and for the clear and unambiguous statement that you made on Ireland's behalf, credit for credit is due. 
You did right. There is no, this is not the time for equivocation. Two million people's lives depend on that aid. Ireland will not be part of any group that will consign the entire population of Gaza to what the ICJ considers plausible conditions of genocide. The evidence was there. Evidence that puts America, Canada, the UK and most of the EU on the wrong side of history and they will have questions to answer. But I also have a question for the media. Now that the ICJ has accepted and indeed quoted the Gazan figures already annihilated by Israel, perhaps they might wonder why they refer to the, those murdered as Hamas-run health ministry figures. What are they afraid of? Too many journalists have already been killed in Gaza. We cannot let jur journalism be murdered too. The ICJ interim findings have changed everything. Everything. Everything has changed after this. We are all complicit unless we act now. Ireland must support South Africa against a deranged Israeli administration, high on slaughter and high on genocide. Never again is now Thonisha. It's not in six months' time. Good morning, uh, Ciarán Corla. Ciarán Corla, humanity itself is on the line in Gaza. With every Palestinian killed in Israel's genocidal war, with every innocent Gazan child whose beautiful life is so horrifically extinguished, with every family wiped out, with every home destroyed, hospital decimated, with every refugee camp bombed, the humanity of the world slips further into the darkness. Ireland must now confront that darkness. Ireland must now confront this genocide and seek justice for the Palestinian people. Ireland must join the case against Israel in the International Court of Justice under the Genocide Convention. South Africa has shown the world what it means to lead with moral conviction and integrity. Last Friday's preliminary judgment by the ICJ is hugely significant. It established that South Africa has a case and that Israel has a case to answer on the grounds of genocidal actions. The Taunish that had stated that the government would consider intervention in South Africa's case once the court had made its preliminary orders. There now remains no excuse for the Irish government not to act, not to join with South Africa in challenging Israel's impunity. And it's not enough to simply, uh, Minister, rehash the same old lines or to point to what you claim to be minor textual uh, changes. The kind of textual change that the government wants is the distinction between clarity, purpose and action on the one hand and dithering delay and shameful inaction on the other. The government's approach to this matter is massively disappointing and does not tally with the Irish instinct to do what is just and right to, for a brutalised people. Today in the Dáil, the Taoiseach said that the Irish government is undertaking a rigorous legal analysis regarding its options, as if those facing genocide in Gaza have all the time in the world. They don't. 26,000 Palestinians have already been killed, mostly women and children. 1.9 million Gazans have been displaced. They have very little water, very little food, nowhere to go. In Gaza, nowhere is safe. This blockaded, impoverished refugee population now face famine and disease. What Palestinian lives Israel doesn't end by gunfire and airstrike, it will attempt to end by starvation and disease. Gaza's health infrastructure has been obliterated. Medical supplies are running out. Medical procedures are carried out without anaesthetic or antibiotics. These are the very markers of genocide. I want to quote Dr. Deborah Harrington, an obstetrician who worked at AXA Hospital, where I think captures the unfathomable horror uh, inflicted on the people of Gaza. She said, 
A child came in alive, literally burnt to the bone. Their face just charcoal, and they were alive and talking, and we had no morphine. Dr. Harrington also said, I saw children with open fractures, partial amputations, open chest wounds, horrendous lacerations and burns, and that was every day. Karen Corla, that these brutalised children could be considered the lucky ones, speaks to the utter depravity of Israel's merciless onslaught. The unlucky children are no longer here. Their tomorrows have been wiped out in the whirlwind of hatred that Netanyahu and his military machine has rained down on the Palestinians over the last 115 days. This is not only a genocidal war, it's a genocidal war on children. On television, on social media, the world and its leaders have watched Gaza become a graveyard for children. And shamefully, nothing has been done to put a stop to it. While the ICJ didn't use the word ceasefire, the only way to operationalise its ruling is through an immediate, full and permanent ceasefire. Israel's slaughter must be stopped. By intervening in the South African case in The Hague, Ireland would become the first European nation to seek justice for the people of Gaza through the international justice system. We all know the famous saying, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. Let's be under no illusions, what Israel is inflicting on the people of Gaza is evil. Ireland is a nation of good people, a people with our own story of oppression, colonisation, dispossession, famine, and we must now do something. That something in this time and in this place must be to join with South Africa in their case to hold Israel accountable for their crimes against the Palestinian people. So the government must show courage. They must stand for humanity. The dithering, the fence-sitting, hedging your bet bet bets is over. It is now time to act on our behalf, and the government must act. If this weren't so serious, the Minister's play on words would be entirely laughable. To suggest that the government's amendment is simply some linguistic, small textual changes to our motion is, as I say, laughable, but also inexcusable. The Sinn Féin motion, Can Corla, calls very clearly on government to make a declaration of intention that it will join the South African case against Israel under the Genocide Convention. The government amendment includes the word consider before that demand. It is the equivalent of changing do to do not. It completely undoes the purpose of this men and, and motion and therefore I am urging this House to reject the government amendment. I'm urging all those members of government who have joined with us in condemning the brutal Israeli attacks on innocent Palestinian men, women and children to um, vote according to their beliefs when we come before this House tomorrow night. Just think about what happened last Friday. To call it a game changer doesn't even begin to outline the magnitude of what the International Court of Justice determined, because they had options before them. They could have, as Israel had wished, dismissed the South African charges. But instead, the members of the court, the highest court in the world, charged with upholding international humanitarian law and overseeing the Genocide Convention, said that Israel, Israel it has a plausible case to answer. In other words, it is plausible that Israel is committing genocide. Now, the bar of being plausible is high. How ashamed would any citizen of any country be 
that their government was accused of plausibly committing genocide. We have a view that this goes beyond a plausible case, but at the end of the day, the ICJ will make a final declaration. But a state that is currently before the International Court of Justice, have that court having decided that it is a plausible case for genocide to answer for, is also a state that enjoys the most beneficial trading, diplomatic and economic relationship with the most powerful entities in the world, including the United States and, to our shame, the European Union. So the question that has to be asked is, how do you bring a state from plausibly committing genocide to stopping? Stopping their acts of terror, stopping the bombardment of hospitals, of schools, of refugee camps and of an entire civilian population. Stopping the displacement of two million people and allowing the most basic of humanitarian assistance to reach a civilian population that are undergoing a humanitarian catastrophe, the likes of which we have hardly seen in our lifetimes. How do you stop? You do something to force them to stop. And we have been crying out, recognising that the word of Irish government ministers are much stronger than many other ministers across the, across the world, but also recognising that words will not be enough in this instance. Words have to be matched by actions. Our appeal, our appeal to all the members of this House is to take this action, this action which simply involves us following the very brave leadership of South Africa by making and joining the case um, against Israel. I urge members of this House to reject the government amendment and to support the Sinn Féin motion. In Gaza, the question is that the amendment in the name of the Taunish to be made, is that agreed? Not agreed. Not agreed. Not agreed. As far as the vote has been called, it is deferred until the voting uh, slot tomorrow evening.